God of praise all over this building. Hallelujah. He is everything to us. Hallelujah. He is life. He is breath. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands all over the building and thank God for being everything. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah for being everything to you. Hallelujah, life, your health, your strength. Every single morning when we get up and pray, we say, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for, high, for life, for health, and for strength, for the activities of our limbs. Because if it had not been who was on our side, where would we be? Hallelujah. We're able to act, we act, we are actually able to walk around uh, without the use of a mobile you know, way of us to walk, we in a wheelchair, and everything else. So we ought to be grateful for that. Amen. So how great is our God? Hallelujah. He is a great God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift your hands all over this building. Hallelujah. Go to see. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. How many actually will praise God? Who came here to lift up the name of Jesus? Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, because we're going to give God some praise.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. You are wonderful. Hey, glory. You know, I heard uh, Bishop Trotter, he was saying, if you praise him, you just might feel a little better. Glory to God. And so a lot of times we have burdens and things that's on us. And we have the weight of life on us. And a lot of times the only thing we have to do is let out a praise. Let out a shout. Because we have the victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, let's take our worship team really quick. I'm getting my wife a break right here because she got to preach. <laughs> really soon. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for coming here. Thank you for coming to our One Touch Ministries event. I am Pastor Shetty Young and my wife, Prophetess Naditra Young. We want to welcome you here on today. Hallelujah. We want to welcome everyone who is watching us live right now on Facebook. Amen. We are so grateful for you guys on today. Thank you so much for coming in and listen. Um, we're going to save our offering for later, but I will post um, in uh, online really quick our cash app uh, where you can also give and we want to also give money. So if you're on, because I got a uh, request about uh, giving. So if you're giving by cash app, it is the time. And are you good? <laughs> it is the dollar sign, uh, the number one touch in the letter M. Um, so yeah, so that, again, we'll do that more later here in the service. I'm going to save offering here in the service till after my wife preaches. Amen. But if you're online, if you want to give now, it's the dollar sign, the number one touch M. Um, you can give that way. Amen. And at this time, we're going to have uh, Pastor Jezreel. Um, you said you and your pastors have something. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so this um, mighty woman of God um, that's coming to you right now. Um, who else is coming? This mighty man of God, the mighty woman of God. Um, pastor Jezreel is the, you're the youth pastor of... Um, What's the name of the church? Under the, under the shadow of the light. Yes. You want to get that set up for you, sir? Yes. Yes. What you need? What sound do you need? Just regular piano? You want strings at all? No. Just regular piano. I got you, bro. <laughs> Can praise God where you're at right now. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I came to provoke the presence of God in this place. And I know when the presence of God is there, I know that God is going to do something mighty and amazing. How many believe it? I know some people came for a miracle. I know some people came for an experience. How many of you are willing to, to, to receive an experience from God tonight? Hallelujah. Worshiping where you are, amen. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Ah! Uh -huh. 
somebody.
things And to you are all things yes. You deserve the glory
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for not counting in robbery to come out tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Woman of God, I'm telling you, I, I met you by accident. We came to your church. They were having a midnight. You can bring it down just a little bit. They were having a midnight service. And we went to a midnight service. Now, I've been around Spanish people my, you know, off and on, and I never understood nothing they said, you know. So when I walked into church, I was like, okay, this is a big church. That's what's up, all right. And then everybody started speaking, and I was like, yo, God, I don't know nothing they say. But let me tell you something. The power of God was in the building. I recognized the power of God. And when I tell you, I think we left that place, it was about three or four o'clock in the morning. We worshiped all night long. And I'm telling you, and I hadn't seen her in like two years. So a couple of weeks now, y'all can bring it down just a little bit more for me. I don't want to strain tonight. Y'all done killed me. So uh, about two weeks ago, two weeks, about two weeks ago, Pastor Jezro had asked me and my husband to come out to a afternoon service. And I walked in and I was like, oh man, they ain't going to pass. I remember her. I couldn't remember her name. I was like, but I remember this young lady. So we were sitting in the service. Of course, y'all know I don't know how to speak Spanish. So I'm like, oh Lord, I don't know nothing that they say. <laughs> I don't understand nothing. But of course, Pastor Jezero, he was in uh, interpreting and letting everybody know what was going on. And we worshiping. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit gave me a word for pastor. And I tapped my husband on the shoulder. I was like, yo, I got a word for the pastor, but I ain't saying nothing. And it wasn't even five seconds later, she comes up to me, woman of God. I was like, hey, how you doing? You got a word for me, don't you? I was like, yes, ma'am, I do. I do, yo. So I'm telling you, we just fell back in love again. And I'm telling you, I enjoyed myself. So let's give Pastor another hand. Come on, y'all. Y'all can do better than that. Come on. Oh, Listen, I want to say hello to a couple of people. Now, let me tell you something. These are my homies. We live around the corner from one another. I met them about five years ago, and I fell in love with these people, and they did not just become my best friends, but they became my family. And they, they didn't replace my biological family. They, they, it was just an extension of family. And sometimes we get caught up wanting people to replace people in our lives that messed over us. They didn't replace anybody. They just came in and they just began to show me love. And one thing y'all must know that love can cover a multitude of what? Sins. And at the time I was broken, I was messed up, I was going through a lot. And when I tell you, these, this couple came into my life, I met them through my husband, and man, we fell in love with each other. It's been an awesome, awesome friendship. I'm telling you, we live around the corner from each other. And literally, and don't see each other enough at all. But I praise God for Pastor, Pastor Brian and Pastor Madeline Pilot. I'm gonna get in trouble later. We had a little, we got an inside joke that we only talk about at home. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They got pen hammers now. Yeah. <laughs> Brian is the most blackest white dude I have ever met. I'm just telling y'all right now. So if we use the N word, don't get mad at us, because that's just how we talk. That's just how we talk. But I praise God for them. I praise God for Prophet, Prophet Sharon. <laughs> He's sitting there like, huh? Uh, okay. uh, 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 he's like, brown. You want me on the program? Uh, yeah. I praise God for one of my mentees. I praise.
praise God for her. Miss Jennifer, she's coming a long way. I want y'all to stand and give this young lady a hand clap because she deserves to be loved tonight. Love you, honey. So glad to see you. To God be the glory. Praise God for your healing. I praise God for Elder, Elder, and First Lady. Elder Bay, Roddy Bay, Some First Lady. <laughs> Praise God for y'all. Praise God for y'all. Hallelujah. Minister Nancy, God bless you. Thank you so much for being supportive. I love you, dear. And to one of the baddest ushers in the back, I'm telling you, this lady dresses every Sunday. She's sharp every week. God bless you, Mama. Thank you for coming. And I also want to say thank you for coming from all the way from Philadelphia. I mean, I've been knowing this baby for a very, 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 very long time since I was a baby. 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. I didn't ask you to tell my age. <laughs> Thank you. I just remember I've knowing her for 40 years. That's what's up, yes. And I'm gonna tell you something. We grew up in the same church. We went through the same things. We cried the same tears. We went through the same struggles, but I praise God for deliverance. I praise God for healing. I thank God for restoring. I thank God for shining your coat. I praise God for clothing away the disease. Angeles, Gloria, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And last but never least, but to my amazing husband, this dude, he the only one I know that can handle me. The only man I know that can handle me. That's my homie. That's my sidekick. That's my best friend. And I thank you, Pastor Shannon. God bless you, man of God. What I'm talking about. And to my one and only, my BFF, woo -woo. my baby. Standing behind the camera. Yeah, she's standing. We thank God for the media because she's media team, past his aid, uh, 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 security. No, I'm serious. Because she came, she saw me move and said, hey, mom, you all right? You need me to come downstairs with you. I was like, when you get a chance, maybe you can come down and watch the door. All right, give you one second, I'll be right here. I was like, my mini me, Sierra, God bless you. Listen, we got all of that out of the way. Now let's be more praise.
But the funniest thing, because my husband used to laugh at me when I would tell him that that kind of stuff would happen to me. And he'd be like, okay, yeah, whatever. I'd be like, no, for real. God tells me what to put on. And I'll never forget one service. We was out, and God told me to put on all black. And I went to the service not knowing what I was walking into. But by the time I left there, I was slaying demons. The Holy Ghost said, see, that's why I tell you what to put out. So the night, I really was trying to get glammed. And my husband would tell you, I tore up the house. Then I put it back together, tore it up again, went to the store, ran he Ain't nobody had nothing I wanted. And the Holy Ghost said, didn't I tell you to put no jeans on? Put that black shirt on. And don't put no earrings on. Put some flat shoes on your feet. You can put a little bit of makeup on, and that's about as far as it's going to go. And I was like, oh, Lord. So when I told Shannon, I said, I got my earrings in my bag. The Holy Ghost said, you better take them earrings out the bag. <laughs> so I went in the bag, and I took my earrings out, and I put them on the table. So I couldn't wear no earrings. And the Holy Ghost let me know. He said, because we're going to do some work tonight. We're going to do some healing and set you free and deliverance tonight. And see, God said he can't allow nothing. He said, I don't want nothing to get in the way of that. And sometimes we get caught up in the glitz and the glamour. Sometimes we get caught up in them clothes. And we get caught in trying to be fancy. Every now and then you got to put a pair of jeans on and a t-shirt and get down and dirty for the Lord. Because let me tell you something, it's nothing like pure healing, pure deliverance, pure purity, my God from Zion. So tonight the topic, I know it's called Stop the Curse. So I want you to repeat after me, say Satan. Satan. You better stop cursing at me. You better stop cursing at me. Oh, y'all didn't say it like I wanted you to say it. Y'all got to put some oomph into it. Come on, come on. Because let me tell you something. Before you got saved, if somebody cursed at you, just think for one quick second, what would you do? Well, if somebody, there you go, Brian. There you go. For, especially for the ladies. Y'all already know that that B word is not a very good word to call a young lady. Well, and that's called fighting words. And if somebody called you out of your name, what would you do? You got it? All right. So we're going to say, say it one more time. Say, Satan. Satan. You better stop cursing at me. You better stop cursing at me. All right, amen. Glory to God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Whoosh, I'm telling you. Curse. Words includes that you are speaking, you're speaking words that may harm somebody. When you're cursing, your 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 intent is to inflict harm, pain. You, you're there to damage them in some type of way. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've cursed before. Yeah. Oh, th th please, y'all, don't, don't, don't do that to me tonight. Yeah. Don't sit cute. Please don't make me call you out. Don't sit cute. Yeah. Some of us are still saved and still cursing. Yeah. Come on now. Oh, come on now. Let somebody get you mad enough for what you want to say. All right? Saying a cuss word happens to be something that we do when we're angry. Yeah. We're frustrated. Mm -hmm. Or somebody done hurt us. <laughs> and put us in a bad position. My God. And sometimes we don't understand that cursing can cause damage to the individual that we're speaking to. Sometimes word curses can linger yeah. 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 like a skunk. Uh -oh. 
that sprays you is a smell that never ends. You can describe it as a venereal disease that seems like it never wants to go away. You got to get medicine for it. You got to go to the doctor. You got to find out what kind of disease it is. And according to some people, when HIV first came out, there was no cure for it. So sometimes cursing can put, put cursing, cursing someone can put them in a position where they feel like there's never a cure for the word that you said to them. So you say it to somebody, you're clumsy. You're just so clumsy. You'll never amount to anything. Am I hitting somebody? You'll never change. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be just like your mother or your father. Okay. These are just simple words that we say to one another, or these are simple words that we say to our children because we're angry. Okay? All right. You'll never find anyone to love you like I do. I wish you were dead. I wish you were never born. Those are words that we say. And you say, that's not a bad word. I was just saying how I felt. But you don't realize you're cursing yes, yes, yes. the very thing that you say you love. Come on, come on. Like I tell parents all the time, as a mother, you have to be careful what you say to a child. Yes. Because that curse word, that I don't love you, or you'll never be anything, or you're just like your father can wait on a child. And it'll push them into their adulthood. Yeah. And they'll make them think that I'm just like my father. Or I'm just like my mother. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody will never love me. Mm -hmm. You'll be so surprised. They'll be in their late 40s and they still remember mm -hmm. the curse that you placed on them. My God. Oh, God. Oh, Glory to God. Jesus. Cursing versus cussing. Placing a curse obviously is not the same as uttering curse words. Yeah. But both concepts start with Christian church. Mm. We say we are kingdom people, but we don't have a problem cursing one another. Mm. And you say, I'm not cursing, I'm not using bad language. Anytime that you tell somebody, well, you'll never be nothing without me. Mm. Uh. Well, your anointing is not as great as mine. Uh. You'll never be bigger than your master. They, it's in the Bible, but they use it out of context. It is in the Bible. You got to read your Bible to find that down. It's in the Bible. It is. But they use it out of context. They use it for their own game. So you gotta be careful. This is why we encourage kingdom people to read their word. So when people begin to start cursing at you, you know, I uh -uh, no, I don't receive that. Amen. Right. I can't take that, I'm sorry. That doesn't apply to me. Maybe that's for someone else, but it's not for me. Oh my God. Cursing. Are you cursing today? Or are you allowing the enemy to curse at you? See, we don't realize we can curse ourselves. And you say, well, how can I curse myself? Because when you tell yourself, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'll never be yeah. nothing. You just curse your own self. Because life and death is in the power of the white tongue. All right, y'all not it's in the power of the tongue. It's in the power of the tongue. Every time you tell yourself, I can't, then that's exactly what's going to happen. You won't. You won't be able to do it. The moment you tell yourself, I don't think I can do this, well, honey, I'm here to tell you that you won't. 
I'm broke. Ooh, I hate when people tell me that. Help us, God. <laughs> because you know why? You gonna always be broke if you keep telling yourself you're broke. Amen. If somebody comes to you and says, "Oh, do you have twenty thousand dollars?" Oh, not right now. Because see, I don't know what's about to happen in about ten minutes from now. I don't know what's about to happen tomorrow. I may actually walk into something that'll get me forty thousand, and I can give you your twenty, and I can give you one. All right, all right, y'all. Are you catching it just a little bit? Stop saying you broke. Just say, I don't have it right now. Because you're not lying. You don't have it right now. Amen. You don't have it in your head. But what's going to happen in 10 minutes? Because one thing I know about God, he can pull something out of the sky and drop it in your lap. Yeah. All right, all right. Come on, don't push me now. Don't push me. Don't push. <laughs> don't push. If you would turn with me to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Verse 29. When you get it, say amen. You know, I'm not going to make y'all stand if you don't want to stand. You know, a lot of people do all this religious oh, stuff. But let me tell you something. But your character stinks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh -huh. verse 29. Yeah, y'all can do a lot of religious, all this convocation, and that's beautiful. But are you living right? Are you sleeping with a man and you're not supposed to be? All right then, come on. Because if we're going to do this thing, we're going to do this thing right. If we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk right. Amen, amen. I have to be honest with you. There's no need for us to preach and teach the word of God and we don't live it. We must learn to live it. You got to live this thing. And I'm not talking to just the leaders. I'm talking to the seat warmers. I'm talking to the ushers. I'm talking to the trustees. I'm talking to the bishop. I'm talking to the apostle. I'm talking to the prophet. I'm talking to the man. I'm talking to everybody. Oh, just like that. Oh, shit. He comes to the You got to live right. That's right. I didn't say be perfect. I said you got to strive. To live right. Amen. That means you can't keep going back to the same thing that pulled you under. When God brings you out of the muck and mire, it ain't no need. That's not a ticket for you to go back. I got to go back and I got to save people. I got to go back and help somebody. No, you better get you together first. Because yeah. see, let me tell you something. When you go back to get somebody, Woo. it's more demons yeah. that come along with it. Okay. Whew. My God. Okay. <laughs> Jeremiah, are you laughing at me? Lord Jesus, they laughing at me. They laughing because they know, listen, I, I ain't got time. We're going to tell the truth up in here. Come on. All right, all right? All right, all right. All right, all right. Can you hand me my phone, Pastor Shannon, please? Because I have it. Okay, wait a minute. I got it. I got it. Got yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Well. But only what is helpful for the building up, building others up according to their needs. That is, that it may benefit those who listen. That it may benefit those who listen. So you got to be careful because people are listening to you. So we got to be careful on what we say to one another. We say things to one another and we, oh, I didn't mean it that way. You got to be real, real careful because what's happening is you say things and it causes people pain. We got 
to be careful on our conversations. We have to be careful how we treat one another. We have to be careful how we approach one another. Sometimes when you see a sister or a brother doing something that's not of God, sometimes you just got to say, God, God bless you, sister. How are you doing? God bless you. Can, can I, it's okay if I talk to you. Ask for permission. Is it okay if I speak to you? Because I saw something and I just wanted to bring it to your attention. If it's all right with you, give them an opportunity to talk. That's a conversation, y'all. You got to give them an opportunity to respond. Yeah. Amen. I said, give them. <laughs> because church people will talk you to death and don't give you an opportunity to respond. Oh. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you better say so. Uh, yeah, church folk, religious people will talk you to death and won't give you an opportunity to respond. You ask for permission because he or she may not be ready to receive the word. Because a good word in the wrong season can cause a problem. Sometimes every, you got to remember everybody is not on your safe path. You're, 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 you're saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled foundation. Everybody's not there. You got some people that are still striving. They're still trying to come out of a mess. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to ask for permission. That's right. Because what you can do, you can cause him or her to turn away from salvation, right. which is free. That's right. Which is free. Amen. It's free. No strings attached. You will cause them to turn away from salvation. This is why we have so many people who are not willing to come back to the church house. Y'all so busy worrying about COVID. It ain't got nothing to do with COVID. It got to do with your mouth. She didn't have to laugh that hard. <laughs> but you'd be surprised of the pastors. And, the, and I'm going to tell you something, apostles. Let me, let me straighten y'all out for a second. Just because you're an apostle doesn't mean that you're right. Wow. It does not mean that you're right. You can be wrong too. And a lot of times you will have always been wrong. But because you are used to people that are, are always, hey, yes, apostle, yes, apostle. Because they sanction everything you say and do. And what happens is, you don't have nobody to give you room to tell you the truth. All right. Y'all don't like truth. Y'all don't like truth. Y'all don't like truth. Sometimes, listen, one thing about a prophet, a prophet is not here to prophesy houses, cars, and lands. Oh, my. And it's called deliverance. And it's called order. We are quick to say that are unwholesome out of our mouths. We talk unwholesome talk. You can't be sliding in your members DM and then want to preach to them and tell them things later on. It don't work like that, y'all. Right, oh, Jesus. Right. We got to live right. We got to talk right towards people. We got to want to get healed. Let me tell you something. It's all right to be a leader and still need healing because I work in progress every single day. This is why I said, Father, forgive me for I have said All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. 
I can't take them boys with me nowhere. Because y'all just, I keep pushing me. Don't do that. I got to ask for forgiveness all day long. Because that's what God would have me to do. Because we don't realize sometimes we do unwholesome talking. Come on. Don't realize that sometimes we we kind of say, hey girl, how you doing, girl? Yeah, yeah. Did you see what sister so and so had on Sunday? God, girl, did you see them stylists? Them stylists was right. I mean, even though it may have been funny. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> it may have been funny. Come on, y'all guilty. Come on, guilty. But what happens is, there you go, Minister Nancy, that's it. <laughs> she said, I, I'm guilty. We all guilty. Come on. But what happens is sometimes it winds up going into unwholesome talking. Because before you know it, then you go from talking about her stockings. She thinks she cute. Wow. She got it all together. Huh? Huh? But I know a husband, and I know this, and I know that. And before you know it, one hour has gone by. Yep. That was supposed to be a hello, God bless you type of moment. We talk just a damn bit too much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Holy Ghost had told me, he said, I want you to stop talking on the phone. I was like, oh, all right, well, Jesus, ain't nobody really like call me like that. No daddy gonna wait for so what I mean. He said, uh-uh. He said, I don't want you to talk to this one. I don't want you to talk to them. And I, don't. I said, but God, the, you know, I don't, that's the only three people I... He said, what I said? I was like, oh, Jesus, I can't do nothing. He said, I don't want you talking to them. Not because they did anything bad. Because I want you to watch your mouth. See, we are so quick to pinpoint the finger yep. at other men, other people. We, we, we are quick to do it. We don't mean to. We do it out of, you know, just being human. We do it, right? But a lot of times God is telling you to stop talking because he don't want you to get caught up. Because one thing I learned at a real young age, people will tell everything that you said, but will never tell what they said. They would never tell it. Yeah. Well, I didn't say nothing. When people come to you with mess and say, yeah, did you hear Sister Sosa was talking about you? They was, what you said? <laughs> That's what you asked them. What you said? Don't worry about Sister Sosa. Ask them, what did you say? Because see, a real friend will cover you and say, all right, um, I, I love you, baby, but listen, I ain't gonna do that. Not today, boo. We're not going to talk about her. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. Now what we're going to do, baby, what we're going to do, this is how you shut them down. What we're going to do is going to pray about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I ain't getting no amens on that one. Y'all act like y'all ain't hear me. I said, we're going to pray about it. Because see, one thing about it, I love the song that says, somebody. Results. Yeah. Go with me to Romans. Come on, y'all. Y'all gotta follow me. Yeah. Open your Bibles to Romans for me, please. <laughs> we getting ready to go to Romans. I had a few more things I wanted to say, but I'm gonna say two more things. I'm gonna give you two more questions, and we getting ready to do some activation up in here, y'all. Yeah. Go to Romans, the 12th chapter, 14th verse. Come on. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you how to go to Romans, and I'm trying to get the Romans. Come on. Anybody have Romans? You got Can somebody read it for me? Let me. Because I'm still trying to get there, baby. Thank you. Romans? Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm a little so I'm used to paper and pen, and I'm, I'm working on this whole tablet. Thing I'm trying to upgrade my style. On, Romans, the 12th chapter, <laughs> verse 14. Thank you. 
Oh, you got it in my phone. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, we're going down to 14, and we're going to cover 14 and 17. My God. Bless those who persecute you. Well, Y'all need to start blessing people who talk about you. Don't get on Facebook Live and try to do a, a shut down and shake down and, and tell them all type of things. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because let me tell you something. If you will pray for them, come on. Yeah. Come on. God will begin to turn things around. He will make your enemies your what? Footstool. They may wind up being your biggest supporters. Oh, y'all. Y'all not catching this thing. I had a young lady one time. I mean, she 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 didn't like me when she first met me. Oh, yeah. We went out to lunch. We was at a lunch some years ago. We was all together. Me and another young lady we was celebrating her birthday. And she didn't like me. And she was getting smart at the table, saying all kinds of things. I was just like, all right, I'm going to let this chick slide because she don't even know me. I ain't even all the way saved. I think I left the cross at home anyway. I think I did because I was looking real cute. I wasn't even looking holy, so I left that cross right up in the house. I was like, this chick, and I was bigger than her anyway. I mean, I'm short, but my, my body weight was big, so I'm like, Man, I saw her across this table before she know it. Man, I man, just one, just one snatch of the Holy Spirit. God, I mean, she kept. I mean, I mean, she was, man, she was throwing up things, and I was just like, Jesus, keep me near the cross. And I was like, All right, Jesus, here we go. So months had passed, and I, I had first, um, I had just opened up my church. But we had some mutual friends. And why one of my mutual friends bring that chick to my church? Oh my God, I was mad. I said, how you gonna bring this girl up in my church? You know she don't even look at me. So I had to, I got myself together. I preached. And I was like, hi, God bless you. Oh my God, how are you? You know, I put my little girl voice on it. I know, praise the Lord. In the back of my mind, I was like, let us say something smart. I'll take her outside, Jesus. Because I ain't always safe. <laughs> Listen, y'all really don't know me, okay? Y'all be saying, oh, I look not teach you. She's so nice. I am. I really am. But don't step on my toes the wrong way. I'm human. All right, amen. So, it just so happened, this chick wound up being one of my biggest supporters. Amen. Wow. Amen. Sometimes she couldn't make it to church, but she would send her tithes and her offering. Mm. And I would look up, mm -hmm. and then she had a nerve to call me, hi, pastor. Hi, hi. how are you? <laughs> and after a while, her hi, pastor, just softened me right up. It had nothing to do with her money because I didn't care about the money. It was her kindness yeah. because she eventually saw who I was and it calmed me down. See, I was looking at what I saw the first time and I held her to that. But not thinking maybe she going through something. Right. Not thinking maybe she facing a trial or tribulation. Maybe she, she got a problem. Something happened before she got there that caused her to be mad. And she just took it out on me because I was the first thing that she could take it out on because I was new to the table. Because y'all all know, everybody always mess with the new person. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think of it like that. And the Holy Ghost began, he said, see? He said, you don't never know who's going to be your biggest supporter. Even though she started out as your enemy, but I made her a footstool. Now she loves you like no, not one. Mm -hmm. So when I first started my ministry, she was one of the biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. This chick would just send money. She would pray. She would, she, Pastor, are you all right? Do you need anything? I'm looking at my phone going, is this is the so so called me <laughs> asking me do I need anything? <laughs> Where did this come from? Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. 
That's exactly what it was. God will make your enemies your footstool. So instead of fussing and tripping about what they're saying about you, start praying for them. Yeah. Come on now, come on. Rejoice with those who uh, rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Okay. Number sixteen. Live in harmony with one another. Oh God. Do not be proud. My God. Be willing. <laughs> To associate with people of low position. Y'all got to get rid of this proud spirit that y'all got. Come on. You get a title, now you want to become famous. I said you get a title, and then you want to become famous. Come on, come on. And then you got every, I call them agitators. Woo. I call them agitators because here you go the flunkies and the agitators. Every time the, the pastor get up, they got to move. And every time the pastor need water, pastor need water, apostle need water. <laughs> if you don't give me that water bottle, go sit down somewhere and collect the word, get the preaching and teaching. My God, do not be conceited. Some of y'all are in positions and you're too conceited. You're so conceited. You're so in the position where you just like, oh, everybody's beneath me. Everybody's beneath me. They didn't pay me my money. Oh my. I preached at a service and they didn't pay me the right kind of money. I tell people all the time, this ain't my word. So why am I taxing something that does not belong to me? Oh, okay, I ain't getting no eight minutes on that one. All right. Sorry. No, I'm serious. He said, I'm sorry. <laughs> because we charge people to come to that church. Come on. 15, 16, you didn't pay me my $2,500. Who cares? It's not your word. Go get a job and pay your own bills. And then you won't have to worry about nobody giving you $2,500 because you'll have it already. Oh, am, I, am I right, Pastor Judge? Come on, come on, come on. Because me and him talk about this all the time. We, we can't stand that thing. People ask us to come to the church. I'll be on the phone going, um, they said, how much you charge? I'll be like, uh, uh, whatever the Lord tells uh, And they be like, hello? I'll be like, yes. How much you charge? I'll be like, can you hold on for a minute? She in it. I don't know what to do. They say, how much I charge? I'm screaming down the steps. He be like, I don't know. So we're screaming back and forth at each other, trying to, because we don't, because why? We do it for the love of Christ. Because but the come on. Don't believe 
it. Amen. When they tell you you can't make it, say, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, I can. Amen. If they say, well, you're not a millionaire yet. That's right. But because I serve a God. Boys, my son, 
will give you peace. I see I'm the robo ocean. preaching false gospel there's a lot of people out there that are preaching uh things that are not biblical and that's why the thing is that we cannot persecute our brothers and sisters it's in the bible that we're uh, uh, fighting not against flesh and blood but principalities and that we cannot see it principalities of darkness and we got to understand something said turn here then all of a sudden you find out there was an accident down there that's why he told you to turn there see it's very very important to have that relationship and know the Lord's voice. He's the best GPS you can ever have. My enemies, I can't stay in the valley because the God said I'm going to prepare a table with the presence of your enemy. I gotta come out of the valley so I can see the haters sitting at the table watching me eat. So I can see the haters and the enemies watching me be blessed. for you to stand in the face of the adversary and they're having a staring match between the lions looking at Daniel and Daniel's looking at the lion. My first reason why I feel like the lion didn't want to eat Daniel is because Daniel is a man of character, a man of integrity. He's a man that's consistent. He's a man full of God and God is in Daniel. God may not restrain it, but he'll sustain you in it. Look at somebody say, neighbor, I'm only standing with a praise in my mouth. Come on, with a dance in my feet because God sustained me. Hallelujah. You don't see the pressure. Come on, you don't see the problems. You don't see the pain. But the reason I got a praise is because even though that he didn't restrain it, he sustained me in it. See, so don't judge people by their praise. Come on. Some of you are afraid to shout because you're afraid of what people may say about you. But baby, if they only knew your pain, they would understand your praise.